Okay, so I've rebuilt my home lab again, this time using OpenStack again. There were some limitations in what I could do with the last one, but the main thing was being able to shut down servers. So in the lab we just built, I had the OpenShift control plane running on Fedora server, and then the R610 running as a compute node of that OpenShift control plane, um, connected back to that OpenShift control plane. So the limitation there was that if the control plane was down and I tried to reboot a VM running on the compute node, that VM wouldn't come back up. And that's, and that's not an ideal situation for me because I want to be able to shut down and do maintenance on a server, bring it back up, shut down the other server, etc, etc. Um, so it was fine with the, with the virtual machines while they were still running, but if I tried to reboot them while that control plane was down, then I would have problems. There are also some limitations. We've had a fair few blackouts here over the last couple of months since I built that lab, and I noticed that the OpenShift control plane would take quite a while to come back up online, and that would keep things like Home Assistant, Unify, everything running in that Kubernetes cluster down until that was back up and running. So I've gone ahead and redeployed at this point. So we can see here that I've redeployed the, the OpenStack environment. So the difference now is that I'm using my R710 as a, a standalone all-in-one node and the compute node just as a compute node in that cluster. So if we go back to my diagram, so if we go back to my network diagram here, we scroll down. So what we're doing is this node here will now be the OpenStack standalone node. So it's using the standalone role, which contains all of the controller services plus the compute services, just so I can run virtual machines there as well as the controller stuff. This node here, the R610 over this side, I'll uh, move my head actually. So then this node over here, the R610, that will be the compute node now. So if we go back to the terminal and we'll have a look at the templates here. So my answers file now. So I've removed TLS. So I'm really going to keep just this deployment really lightweight and I'm going to build my labs on top of it as virtual machines. And that will um, minimize the breakage that I have in my lab environment. We're including a lot of the same things we were before. Um, we've got this new roles data file though. So this is, this is where it's changed. So we take a look in the new roles data. We can see here I've got the standalone role and we'll go down, and then I just have the compute role. So when I do the deployment of my bare metal and I set it standalone to a count of one, and I'm changing the host name format here so that we format it as over cloud controller zero still. Um, and then this one here will do over cloud compute zero in this case, and I'm using the compute role there. So we already have that standalone role. You don't need to go and create that. That exists here. Use our share OpenStack triple O heat templates. And then in roles, there's a whole bunch of all these pre-configured roles. So to create that, all I did was cat user share OpenStack triple O heat templates roles. And then standalone. And I put that into a file called, we'll put it into one called example roles.yaml. And then the same for compute. And now if I open the example roles file, we have exactly what I've got. So that's all we've done there. Um, then I did the, the bare metal provision that I've already showed before to provision the nodes and configure the networking on them. The networking is the same as I had before, except I'm actually using bonds now. So we have an OVS bond with balance SLV on both nodes. So we go, here, we'll zoom in a bit. Heat admin, so this is the compute node, for example. Show. So we can see here in BRX, we have bond one. And if I do, yes, app CTL bond show, we can see there that it, it is indeed a bond. I'm not using LACP, it's just balance SLB, so software load balance. I might change it to balance TCP as well soon. And we'll go back to this other node. This is the now the controller node. So same thing here. TL show bond, our uh, bond show. So again, balance SLV, uh, we've got ENO2 and ENO3 in that bond. So 
this is exactly how it was configured when it was running Fedora server as well. It's just now it it can also run compute nodes. So we have a look here in Podman PS filter name equals Nova. We can see that we have Nova compute, but we also have Nova API scheduler conductor etc. If I export all this cloud equals Nova cloud OpenStack compute service list. We can see there that the controller as well as the compute node appear as Nova compute nodes in this environment. So that's really cool. Um, then for the servers, let's go back here. So OpenStack server list all. So I've started doing exactly what I did before where I imported the virtual machines, like my Fedora work one, for example. So all of the disks are still on my controller node, which was the Fedora server. So I've just remounted that partition under var lib nova and then images. So these are all of the, the old virtual machines. So I'm just going through and importing them one by one and then getting them back up and running in the new environment. Um, the, I'm going to still make some changes though because I was using free IPA and like the IPA server here for example. So I don't really want to do that anymore. I'm going to instead use my PFSense to do all the DNS in the environment and that way I can run less virtual machines and hopefully reduce my power costs as well. It'll also make it easier to migrate virtual machines between these two hosts so that I can do maintenance on one or the other at a time. Um, so that's where we're at at the moment. The only other thing that is probably interesting to show, we go back here. So just the NIC configs in this in this situation. If we go back into bare metal and we can see I've defined the NIC config as the bond J2 here. So we'll have a look at that file. So here we can just see that I'm adding NIC2 and NIC3 to the um, the bond and uh, the bond mode we're using balance SLB and then everything else is just default there. So yeah, that's the that's the new lab environment. Um, I'm trying to do a, a few different things with different projects, for example. So we exit this again. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run a lot of the infrastructure I want, like OpenShift for running BNE-Home project. I'm in the admin project, which is the one we're looking at now. I've been doing some experimentation with different versions of different flavors of Kubernetes because OpenShift I was struggling to join my Raspberry Pis to and they're really important in my environment so that I can run the sensors and various things that my Raspberry Pis do. So I've played a little bit with Juju and tried to deploy charmed Kubernetes but it deployed like 10 virtual machines which was a bit heavy for, for what I wanted. Um, I did microcates as well using Juju to deploy charmed microcates. That, that didn't really work out as well as I'd hoped. So at the moment, I'm still using Ubuntu and I'm just testing out a couple of different deployments of Kubernetes there and joining my Raspberry Pis. So we do kget nodes. We can see that I've, I've joined in my first Raspberry Pi. I'll join in the second one. Um, and then I'll start to get some applications deployed here. But at the moment, it's just Calico for, for networking. And I haven't deployed anything else at this stage. So I need to do like the dashboard, Prometheus, all that, all that stuff again. But yeah, that's that's what I'm doing with the new new home lab. I thought I would give an update on that since I've completely changed the architecture there. Um, and then on top of this, in that OSP test project, so if I export OS Cloud to set it to the OSP test environment, we can do OpenStack server list. And here I've deployed a director node. So I will deploy a full triple O environment under this project. And then I'll make all my changes and test various things. We'll do TLS, we can do TLS everywhere. We can do a whole bunch of things in that environment without breaking my, my home lab. So that's the plan so far. So then I've just gone through and set up the, uh, the networks. So these are all of the networks to mirror um, what's to mirror the networks that I'll use for triple O. And to, to create them, I just created a, a uh, really quick script called make OSP networks and I read in the, the network starter YAML file and go through and create all those networks just using the OpenStack API. Um, so yeah, that's it for now. That's, that's where the home lab's up to and I'm going to be doing a, a few different videos. I want to make one on 
on the new Kubernetes deployment as well. If I choose to stick with the Ubuntu Kubernetes, or maybe I'll go back to MicroKates, or um, maybe something else, but it just it won't be OpenShift because I can't join in the, the Raspberry Pis. And I don't want to do Kube Spray again. So, you know, at the moment I'm just using Kube ADM and bootstrapping a cluster that way. And that might just be the, the solution moving forward, but I will uh, make another video on that and keep everyone updated. That's all I have. If you have any questions about using standalone or um, you know any other questions specifically about this architecture, I'm happy to answer them and walk through in more detail how I've done things, but I think that should just about cover it.